Welcome everyone back to weekly weather updates and this morning we'll be having a look at the GFS, the GM, the ECMWF and the GFS ensembles for the next, uh, for the weather for the next couple uh, couple weeks. It's looking like we're going to be continuing quite a westerly and mild pattern at least for the next week and then there's hints that we could be seeing things a little bit more drier with more high pressure and potentially quite spring-like. Do remember if you enjoy my videos make sure you do like and subscribe as it does really help me out. But we'll first have a look at the GFS run, and you, as you can see at the moment, we've got a large area of low pressure out in the Atlantic, and that was a named storm a few days ago, um, or two days ago, and it's still milling around to our north and our west, but it's not really making too many inroads into the country, as the jet stream is moving very much from uh, from the south to north as this area of high pressure out in Europe is blocking out the low and it basically means we've got a split across the country we've got quite mild uh, and dry conditions especially in the east um, but then further westwards it's still quite windy uh, and wet with weather fronts moving past we've had a lot of rain over western areas over the last couple of days it does look like it's going to be subsiding slightly over the next day or two before it looks like there's a couple more yellow warnings out uh, for the middle of this w this upcoming week and i'll look at that in, in the next couple of days but as we run through this current gfs run you can see these low pressures just mill out in the atlantic and don't really make too many inroads in the uk it remains fairly blustery and there will be weather fronts, especially further westwards. We can see more into the, the greens and blues. That means lower pressure is more influential. And it does mean, yes, there will be some rain around. But with the southwesterly wind, it will basically feel mild anywhere. Anywhere you are, it's going to feel maybe 10 to 15 degrees. And uh, 15 degrees, maybe a little bit more in sunshine, especially for the east where we're close to that higher pressure. But as we run through, you see... It does look like the westerlies will eventually break down the higher pressure for most of the country and we see a, a weather front moving through there and there'll be a colder sector within that and then you can see a colder front and nothing too cold but again might dip the temperatures back down to maybe uh, a little just around average to a little bit of above average and beyond that we maintain a very westerly pattern it does look like though high pressure will start to build in you can see those oranges and yellows are further we're further westwards across the country so it means even western areas are likely to go a bit drier and less windy and you can see that high pressure does build to our north on this GFS run it's not going cold um, but hence it could go cold in the longer term but we do maintain quite mild temperatures coming up from the south it would be probably quite uh, quite a warm spring like days and potentially cooler uh, maybe frosty nights with that but you do see some very cold air to our east and this GFS run does start to pull that in eventually I must say but beyond that you see weather fronts try big inroads again and quite a quite a deep area of low pressure does make its way through the country that probably would be a named storm with that but behind that high pressure does build in and we do start to pull in northerly winds for the end of the run quite cold air does make its way through the whole country um, and we do go very cold actually for the end of this run into early march and with higher pressure towards greenland we've got a sort of got a northeast uh, sort of northwest southeast jet stream alignment coming from greenland down to spain and it basically means low pressures to our north pulling in colder air for, from the north again this gfs one is an outlier i must say that uh, having looked at the ensembles already it definitely it definitely is an outlier there's no other ensemble members really going for this sort of pattern but it just shows you that the potential is still there it's not completely guaranteed we're going to be going mild uh, and spring-like it's just i'd say maybe 80 percent chance that it's not going to be uh, cold conditions like this at this stage but again you can't rule it out really with a sun stratospheric warming happening a, a month ago you can't rule out having another blocking uh, air of high pressure bringing in colder air again if we have a look at the uh, GM run again, it's a very similar pattern with higher pressure to our southeast, lower pressure to our west. Again, that higher pressure is blocking out before we do see a weather front move through before high pressure does reinvigorate itself. And you see this big high over the top of the country pulling in a, quite a slack southerly or easterly wind, which won't be cold, be actually quite mild. Um, you do see the, the air up 850 HP, it won't be too mild actually, um, but it will be quite pleasant in the day with light winds, uh, it will be quite warm in the sunshine but then temperatures will likely drop off quite a lot at night and we might see a few overnight frosts for inland areas. Beyond that high pressure builds to our north, there's potential it could start to go a bit colder from that um, in the longer term, but generally it will feel quite mild. Um, and very pleasant. Temperatures may not be 
super high mate and may only get to maybe 13 14 15 degrees um under this area of high pressure but because there'll be slack winds because it'll be clear skies a lot of sunshine around it will feel quite spring-like with that we now have a look at the ecmwf again very similar pattern over the next couple of days and as we head towards the end of the week, high pressure does build in. Um, low pressure is still close to the north, especially to parts of Scotland. Perhaps a bit more rain there before high pressure does build in towards day 10. And we have sort of a southerly wind. And if we look at the 850 HPA temperature, is a bit warmer on the east of the OF, And that definitely would be quite spring-like under that area of high pressure. Quite warm days, maybe a bit cooler at night. Um, but with slack winds, it will feel very pleasant uh, and almost spring-like condition for that. Now if we have a look at the, EC, uh, the GF, GFS Ensemble, sorry, A150 HPA and precipitation, uh, temperature A150 HPA, you can see generally above average at the moment, that's for those southwesterly winds, then we do dip down with that colder front we saw, and then we generally go to around uh, maybe 5 degrees above average. We can see most of the ensemble members are going there, even the coldest ensemble members are only going for around average um, with that. And they're generally staying above average. Precipitation is quite low, so symbolic of that higher pressure build. Um, and we could be going quite mild and spring-like with that. You do see the GFS ensemble. Um, ensembles have a couple out colder outliers. And then you see that operational run, which is a very big outlier, maybe five degrees colder than the next ensemble run. So again, very much an outlier, but you can't rule it out at this stage. Um, but generally does look very mild and very dry, maybe in early spring for many areas. If we have a look at the two meter temperature, if we actually go to this one, go back to the midnight run, you can see generally highs get around 13, 14, 15 degrees. And again, the GFS ensembles don't uh, predict um, sort of microclimate, you know, where we get warmer uh, air from the sun, uh, warming it up as the sun can make a few degrees difference at this time of year between maybe 12 or 13 under cloud or 15, 16 under the sunshine. So I suspect that could get a little bit higher, maybe 16, 17 degrees potentially. But you can see generally you get quite mild. You see overnight it does get down to maybe 2, 3, 4 degrees, perhaps a couple going a little bit cooler. But again, nothing too substantially cold um, and it does look like we will be seeing um, quite mild uh, and dry uh, spring-like conditions. So if you do enjoy those conditions, it's looking good for you. If you're enjoying cold and snowy conditions, it's looking unfortunate that we might not be seeing those uh, widespread again um, until potentially next winter. Again, you can't rule out uh, easterly or northerly blasts in March or even early April, as again, March is actually statistically the highest um, it has the highest frequency of easterly winds, but given sun strength, warming continent, it won't be particularly potent, as there's no, there's really no chance of getting proper beasts from the east. And we look at these patterns, but any slack easterly wind or northerly blast uh, or polar cold front, it could give a couple days of colder temperatures, maybe some snow showers around, but that's really the most we're looking at at this stage. It doesn't look like there'll be any sustained cold patches uh, until next winter. Again, I can't rule out seeing some colder temperatures, but at the moment I definitely think it's just probably, if we do see anything colder, it will just be maybe a one or two day northerly or easterly wind with a few snow showers around, and that's probably the best we're going to get. So, sorry about that if you're a snow weather fan, I certainly do enjoy the snow, but I mean, we've had our fair share this winter, to be honest. We've done a lot better this winter than we have for the last two, um, uh, so you can't really be too angry with it going uh, prematurely mild. So anyway, thanks for watching, hope you enjoyed, subscribe if you're new, and I'll see you again for another video soon.